My work is all about data. When I was doing my PhD, I was working on managing and organizing data. Then I started working on unstructured data. How do you clean unstructured addresses, unstructured bibliographic entries? From there, I went more and more into core machine learning. Now, more recently, I work in machine learning and not in the context of any immediate application, but what I do has applications in tasks like translation, speech recognition, object recognition, natural language understanding, and so forth. So the work I did uh, first on understanding unstructured addresses was adopted via a startup to clean addresses in large organizations like NSTL and also Boeing. So then I worked on finding duplicates in large address collections and that was motivated by a problem in the income tax department. Later on, I started working more in information extraction. So I worked on conditional random fields. I created uh, at that time an open source toolkit for information extraction, which was downloaded and used by researchers and practitioners worldwide. So one such aha moment was when we were trying to find structure in uh, addresses. Up until then, the way to solve this problem was to label each individual word as whether it's part of a road name or not. I came up with this idea of labeling spans of text. Uh, and then that led us to a model called a semi-CRF model, which uh, had some impact in the information extraction literature. Actually, for a long time, machine learning researchers have been working on hard problems like detecting objects in images, recognizing speech, translating languages. But up until 2010, each of these problems were solved in individual uh, communities which did not talk much to each other. But then around 2012 to 2015, uh, a bunch of researchers came up with uh, a small uh, set of common tricks by which for some of these hard tasks, people obtained accuracies which were unheard of before. And then suddenly, for some of these hard tasks, machine learning started obtaining accuracies which made them more practical for uh, deployment in the real life. And uh, after that, it, there was a tremendous positive feedback. And now we are living in this age of AIML again. Currently, uh, what people are trying to ensure is that the machine learning model does not introduce any new bias which was not already present in the data. So this is the current hot problem and a lot of smart people around the world are working on this problem and this problem I believe will be solved. But Technologically solving the bias problem does not mean that the bias problem will go away from society as long, uh, as, long as human nature remains unchanged. So I worry a lot about the intrusion uh, on privacy from the various uh, machine learning companies. Uh, so for a while, uh, I, was work, I was tinkering on a project called Our Data For Us, where the main goal was that each individual would own their data like the, wo like the way they own their other physical assets. So if a business wants to pers use their data for some personalization on, uh, or other services, they can um, take the data from the user under some contract. but. Uh, a user will have full control over their data and they will own whole of it. I am not sure if we necessarily want to equalize gender ratios across all fields. I don't 
uh, value STEM disciplines any more than I value literature, art, sports, medicine. What I want to ensure is that we do not introduce any subconscious biases in the minds of young children. What I would like more is people work in fields that they enjoy rather than fields which are glamorized or considered uh, valuable along any dimension. So in the immediate future, I am working on problems to make heavyweight machine learning uh, models accessible in resource poor niche settings. So actually for the last few years, I have been working on core machine learning without uh, focus on any particular application. But now I feel like I want to apply machine learning on a particular end problem which will impact people around me. I was overjoyed, uh, overwhelmed and uh, I just could not believe that uh, I would be awarded this um, prize. In fact, uh, when I got the call from Infosys, I thought, oh, this is a call for consulting on machine learning. And I was ready to tell them, no, you know, I'm just too busy. But, <laughs> but then I took the phone call and I listened and I was just totally, and you know, just blown away. <laughs> My message to future researchers is to enjoy the path. I request researchers to, um, to relish ideas, to dwell on ideas, and be less of managers, to focus more on quality than on quantity.